Welcome everybody to another episode of the Abona Tennis Online Coaching Podcast. This is your coach, JY, recording live from Easter Bowl. I have a little bit of extra time this morning. Thank you to the time change where I can get up nice and early and get a lot of stuff done. And we have a lot of matches this afternoon to watch. And, you know, I think this is an important time to be talking about mental toughness with the kids that are out here playing at the highest level. These are the best juniors in the country that are playing right now. And a lot of what separates these kids really comes down to mental toughness. All right. The ability to execute on big points, the ability to maintain a consistent level of play and not have big dips in their levels and to not get phased by really tough moments when they might lose a, an important game or two and things are going against them a little bit. You know, who can handle those situations the best? But one of the things that's not talked about enough, in, in, a, in order to do all those things correctly, to handle the stress, the nerves, the tough moments, the big shots your opponent hits down break point and now you got to come back, all right, there's a key element to be able to do all this very well. There's a key element to mental toughness, and that is the routines in between points. A tennis player spends about 80% of a match walking around, not playing or running, walking. And what are they doing when they're walking? They're, they're talking to themselves. They're thinking, you know, consciously or unconsciously. They're thinking of something, and that thinking can either be a powerful tool or a dangerous tool. You know, the job of a tennis player is obviously to make it a powerful tool. You know, we want to make it a tool that can put them in the best state of mind to perform well during the next point. And then when that point is done, boom, they need to do it again. And they need to do it wisely so that they can prepare for the next point. And over and over it goes until the match is done. The problem is most human beings do not do well when they're left alone with their thoughts without any type of a distraction. It's why solitary confinement is considered by most to be a public health issue. It's why prisons use it as a form of punishment for inmates. Most humans do not do well when they are left completely alone. At least untrained humans don't. And that's what kids are. They're untrained humans. They're growing up. They're immature. They're learning. They're experiencing life. And they don't have enough training to handle these difficult situations appropriately. Now, some of you might think that because you've been seeing your child play for a few years that they should have a better grasp on it. Now, one thing is having a better grasp or not, but another thing is being able to do it perfectly. And I'm sorry, but kids are not going to be able to do this perfectly, especially as they're going through puberty and their emotions are going wild, their hormones are going wild, ups and downs. I mean, there's a lot that kids need to deal with in order to control their emotions and handle that time in between points correctly. And yet here they are in the middle of a match. For example, here Easter Bowl, one of the biggest tournaments of the year against the best players in the country, spending 80% of their time in a match completely alone. All the while their opponent is also trying to make their life completely miserable. (laughs) Their opponent wants to ruin their day. They want, to, they want to win. They want to run them ragged and scream, come on, and, and just give them a bad day because that will mean a great day for their opponent, right? So the potential for some negative thoughts to occur is extremely high. It's, it's, and if anything, it's a little bit normal uh, to, to have some sort of negative thought at some point throughout the match. Now, we still need to limit those negative thoughts because we'll never be able to fully get rid of them. And in order to do that, we have to occupy our mind. We have to distract ourselves. We have to keep our minds busy and focused on the situation at hand. And to be able to do this effectively, we need to create a very specific and consistent routine. To simply tell a player to, hey, you got to be positive or, well, just go to the towel and touch the fence. It's just too basic. It's too general. What do they say to themselves? Is that all they do? Just go around, grab the towel, and then just go start to point? That's a great routine well what about all the the rest of the time what are they supposed to think every second of the time in between points needs to have a purpose if not kids are going to be left alone to their thoughts and that's dangerous at least to their game right not to their life it's dangerous to their level of tennis 
the following routine is what I used to use as a player and now what I teach the players I work with. And it's derived from what is called the 16-second cure that is a routine that was created by one of the world's best sports psychologists, Dr. Jim Lair. He worked with Pete Sampras, Monica Sellis, Jim Courier, Gabriella Sabatini, athletes across all sports, executives, everybody. I mean, this guy is one of, if not the best ever. And his process has been the most successful one created to date. And odds are, if you've ever worked on some sort of routine, it's derived from the routine that he created. So if you ever get a chance, go on YouTube and type in 16 Second Cure to see the video that he put out there years ago that is still being used to today and is going to be a major part of what I'm going to describe in my routine. So yes, this is my routine, but I give him full credit as it was taught. My dad learned it from him, then my dad passed it down to me, and then I put on my own little touches on it. But check it out because it's an awesome one. So here's my little spin on the routine. And if you're a player and you don't have a routine down, I strongly recommend just start working on this one and then you can kind of add your little finer details after. But you need a routine right now. If you want to be mentally tough and you want to perform well under pressure, you need a routine. So here we go. Step number one, as soon as the point finishes, turn away from the net and switch your racket to your non-hitting hand and walk around with strong body posture. The non-hitting hand is the weakest hand. Players, for the most part, only throw their rackets or smack balls against the fence when the racket is in their hitting hand. So as soon as the racket goes to their non-hitting hand, they just diffuse some of the anger. Players aren't going to smack balls with their non-hitting hand. They don't have the strength to. So as soon as that racket moves over, it relaxes them even just a little bit. You're going to get something out of that. So switch that racket over. The walking around with a strong body posture, very important because if we're walking around with a weak body posture, we're going to have weak energy and our opponent's going to see that and they're going to use that as motivation that they got you, okay, that they got you in a place where they think they can run away with this match. So if you always have a strong body posture, then that's going to send a strong signal to your opponent that you are ready. Step number two. Look at your strings and straighten any that have moved around. Even though having straighter strings ensures a more consistent tension throughout the racket, it's not really the goal here. The goal is to have your mind move on from the previous point. When things are going wrong, we have a tendency to look around and vent to our friends or parents and, and just get distracted and not be focused on the present. When we start fixing our strings, we're focused on a task at hand. We're focused on not the previous point, right? So if you're, if you want to move forward, which is what we're trying to do here with this routine and get ready for the next point, the first thing you need to do is move on from the previous point. Once you take a look at your strings and you start straightening them, you're looking at something else, you're thinking about something else. You just took another, you just took a step towards moving forward from what just happened and getting ready for the next point. So with step number one, you've calmed yourself down. Step, step number two, you've really now taken your focus away from the previous point and moving forward for the next point. Step number three, take one deep breath in slowly through the nose for five seconds, then breathe out through your mouth for five seconds. Now, the whole goal of this is to get you to calm down. The best way to calm down is a deep, slow breath. Now, I was a player that struggled to breathe in through my nose after long points. So if you're one of those, at least breathe in slowly through your mouth for five seconds and breathe out for five seconds. So this is going to slow your heart rate down. When our heart rate is slower, we're calmer. When we're calmer, we can make more logical decisions. And that's where we want to make decisions from. We don't want to be making decisions from being too upset or too angry with our heart rate too high. And you can also take the other side of it. We don't want to make decisions when we're too confident because we just want an amazing point because now we might play a little bit reckless on the next point. We want to make decisions from a calmer place. Also, when you slow your heart rate down, you give your body a better chance to recover from a long point. If our heart rate's too high, it's still working too hard. When we slow the heart rate down, it gets to calm down and our body's able to recover and get ready for the next point. Sure, doing this one time is not going to have a major effect, 
But if you do this throughout the course of a match, your body's going to last a lot longer. So for all you cramping players that think you cramp a little too easy, check your routines on your breathing because you probably don't have a great enough breathing routine to maintain just a calmer state of mind throughout the match and your body's having a really hard time because your stress levels are too elevated and you're not calming down. Step number four, as you're grabbing your towel or the ball, decide how you want to play the next point. This is when you decide it. Not when you're at the baseline, it's before. You need ample time to get clarity on your strategy. There's a bunch of different ways that we can probably try to win points, but we need to be clear. We need to, preci we need to be precise and organized. And many players like myself, I remember going up to serve sometimes and I'm bouncing the ball and I'm still thinking about how to play it. Or I'm still thinking about how to hit my serve or this or that. My mind's not focused. All right? And I still remember even times I tossed the ball and I'm still having to decide. You can imagine how those points go. And the same thing for a lot of players. You know, If you think about when do most points finish, it's within the first four shots. A lot's going on, right? You toss the ball, head up, down, a lot of randomness, a lot of pace and spins, those first couple of shots. And that's where most points finish. So if you can get by the first four shots, we're going to have a great chance of winning the match. How do you get by those first four points? It's by having clarity on how you want to execute your surplus one or surplus two. So decide how you want to play the point while getting your towel or the ball. And even if you decide on the wrong strategy, look, it's better to be 100% committed to the wrong strategy than 50% committed to the right strategy. Okay, We need to be committed to whatever we're doing. And that's when we'll play most free and let shots go. If we try to be too perfect or we're downing ourselves and all of this and that, we're overthinking, we're not going to be able to play well. So just decide how you want to play before you get to the baseline as you're getting the ball or towel and just commit to it. And that's it. All right. Step number five, when arriving to the baseline to serve a return, give yourself a positive comment such as let's go or lock in or come on right now. And preferably verbal. Even if it's a whisper, that's fine. But if you think about it, we are going to pay attention to something when we hear something. Okay? And when our voice is in our head, it's something, it counts for something. But when we hear something externally with our ears, it overpowers even our own internal thoughts. So when we hear ourselves say a positive comment, it's a really powerful statement we're making to ourselves. And that's what we want before the point starts. We want to be in a positive state of mind, a confident state of mind with great energy. So give yourself that positive comment. And if you can do it verbally, great, because it's going to be even more powerful. All right. And just as a reminder, if you're arriving at the baseline and you still haven't decided when, how you want to play the point, turn around and walk away. Even if they're about to serve or you were bouncing your serve, just say, hey, sorry, sorry, one second, get clarity and then come back. So just need to remind you of that because it happens. Sometimes we decide a strategy, we walk up to the baseline, we get this wonderful idea and now we're confused actually. So that wonderful idea ends up being a disaster. Walk away, get clarity, and then just trust yourself and let the world take you where it may. All right. Feel free to add your own little spin on the routine. But whatever you do, make sure you have a consistent routine that uses a breathing technique to slow your heart rate down so you can be calmer and recover well. It includes positive words of affirmation because we need it. Okay. If you think about a match, you, you can lose 51% of the points of a match and still win. So there's a lot of moments where we can be pretty frustrated with ourselves. So go extra on the positive things you say to yourself. And then finally, make sure you have a clear strategy for the next point. It has to be clear, simple, and precise. And it, this needs to be done consistently, every single little point. All right, that's the only way it works. If you have an inconsistent and undisciplined routine, you're going to break down under pressure because that means that your emotions are letting you take control. We do not want that, okay? We want to be locked in and disciplined with this routine. Remember, 80% of the match is walking around and thinking. So if you do not address this part of the match, it's going to be hard to take care of the 20% of the match. We need this 80%.
All right. You want to succeed during crunch time. You need an automatic routine. So you're not left alone to your emotional thoughts. All right. So for those of you that are out there playing at Easter Bowl or playing other tournaments coming up, if mentally tough and succeeding under pressure and under adversity and handling tough moments is an issue for you, you might need to check on how good your routine in between points is. Good luck out there.